This week, Starlink says it can keep up with demand. NASA picks the big heavy boy, and Inspiration4 is set to launch and make history. Let's go. This past week at SATSHOW, we saw a flurry of tweets from attendees in regards to Dishy2 production numbers. You see, Starlink and SpaceX have taken a lot of heat about Dishy1 because it's too expensive and takes way too long to produce. At those current numbers, they will not be able to meet demand. In response to this, we saw quite a few SpaceX bigwigs commenting that version 2 will be cheaper and multiple times faster to produce. According to SpaceX CFO Brett Johnson, SpaceX could drastically expand production alongside a new and improved version of Starlink's user terminal as early as Q4 2021. Next month, in other words. Johnson says that next-gen DISH will simultaneously have production costs likely dropping to $650 to $750 and enable a dramatic increase in SpaceX DISH manufacturing throughput. Currently, the cost of Gen 1 terminals is roughly $1,200 per dish, Johnson said. With new production models, they will be able to have that cost. However, this will still mean at the current price tag of $500, they will be losing money on the sale, but much, much less. Assuming as Starlink onboards more users and costs of economy come into play as production ramps, they may break even even sooner rather than later. However, this advancement is unlikely to drive costs down for end users like you and me anytime this year. According to an article by Eric Ralph of Teslarati, put simply, if SpaceX can build and sell a million dishes annually in 2022, it would equate to 500 million in dish sales and an additional 100 million in monthly reoccurring revenue every year, effectively taking Starlink from its very first paying customer to 10 figure annual income in two years. With SpaceX likely spending around one to two billion annually to fund Starlink's build out, it's not inconceivable that the venture could become self sustaining with just a few million active users. A milestone just a couple years away at the production rate of a million dishes per year. Okay, okay, not the best news for you and I. It's not going to be any cheaper for us to buy Dishy 2. However, it sounds like great news for the network and certainly for the business model. If we look at what Eric Berger said, it's going to be sustainable in only a few short years, which is amazing at these current numbers. $500, yes, it is expensive. But if you compare it to other satellite technologies, and certainly in the old days, what it used to cost to get the hardware to connect to a satellite was in the thousands of dollars. So 500, while it's expensive, I suspect once we see Dishy version three, four, and the economy of scales grow, we're gonna see a cheaper Dishy hit the market. Beyond production numbers, what's really cool is we're going to see a sustainable business within a few short years. With just a couple million subscribers, we'll be able to break even, and we'll be able to push back that money into further development so things get cheaper and cheaper from this point forward. I'm really excited about that because it's a proven business model and if for it to pay itself off in four to six years is nothing short of amazing. However, we don't really have the numbers yet to support it. We have only the CFO saying a dramatic increase in production, but we don't know what that means. If they can produce a million dishes a year, guess what? It's on. In the past few hours, NASA just announced that they awarded the GOES-U GOES-U weather satellite to SpaceX, and it will be ferried into space on a Falcon Heavy, scheduled to lift off on April 2024. According to Mike Wall of Space.com, NASA has picked Falcon Heavy to launch the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite-U or GOES-U with a planned liftoff in April 2024 from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, agency officials announced on Friday, September 10th. The total launch cost for NASA will be about $152.5 million, they added. Goju will provide advanced imagery and atmospheric measurement of Earth's weather, oceans and environment, as well as real-time mapping of total lightning activity and improved monitoring of solar activity and space weather, NASA officials said in a statement Friday. 
Gozu will be the fourth and final spacecraft in the GOES-R series, a collaboration between NASA and the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. These highly capable weather satellites, which are operated by NOAA, eye Earth from geostationary orbit 2,236 miles above the planet's surface. Falcon Heavy has just three liftoffs under its belt to date, but it's poised to get quite a workout in the near future. The powerful rocket is scheduled to launch two classified missions for the U.S. Space Force over the next few months, for example. It will also loft, among other payloads, NASA's Psyche Asteroid Probe in 2022, the agency's Europa Clipper mission in October 2024, and the first big piece of NASA's Gateway Moon Orbiting Space Station in November 2024. And we can now add Gozu to the docket as well. We just keep chalking them up, huh? Another big W for SpaceX with their win with the Falcon Heavy for the NASA contract. What's the bald bandit going to do now? Who's he going to sue? Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to bring him up, but BE for you judge. See what I did there? He's about to take another very serious blow. When the Inspiration 4 launches next week, it'll make history with four common citizens in space. Wait, 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 wait. One's not so common. This coming week, SpaceX is about to make history again with a historic flight of ordinary citizens, not trained astronauts, into orbit in a modified Dragon capsule on top of a Falcon 9 rocket. Well, if you count one billionaire who purchased a flight as ordinary, but I can't hate, it's for a good cause. Sometimes this Wednesday, four ordinary civilians will climb aboard SpaceX Crew Dragon to spend three days in orbit around the Earth. They will launch from NASA Kennedy Space Center in Cape Granaville, Florida. While initial reports had them going to the ISS, they will not. Instead, they will orbit around the Earth. The capsule has been modified since it does not need docking equipment to include a large dome window for crews to gaze upon the cosmos. Jared Isaacman, a billionaire who founded Shift4 Payments and purchased the flight, said he didn't want this to be just another billionaire in space, so he decided to use it as a fundraiser for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Along with donating 100 million of his own money directly to St. Jude's, he also donated two of the seats to the hospital. They quickly chose a physician assistant that had worked there on the front lines and also was a former patient. And the other seat was used as a sweepstakes for the Cancer Institute that raised 13 million for the hospital. The final seat was won by a contestant and a contest set up by Isaacman, where the winner built the best online store using the Shift4 payment system as a way to raise money for St. Jude's. While on board, the subjects will be monitored, asked to do physical activity, and they will be auctioning off some goods and NFTs. Oh, nothing to see here. Just the first ever three-day orbit of common civilians, untrained astronauts in space, while we see the other billionaires launch for 15 minutes. Oh yeah, that wasn't even in space, so says the FAA. So now we're seeing the continued dominance of SpaceX, and I couldn't be more happy or proud. I'm really impressed that they continue to commit to us with lower cost production methods. They want to increase their production so they can get Starlink in as many hands as possible throughout the world. And finally, they snuggle up with NASA and win yet another contract. What's Jeff Bezos going to do now? Sure, I'm getting tired of shoe fly shoe and scraping his muck off our heat shields, but I really think it's too far gone for him to catch up. He should concede and get out of the way of a proven space company. And as much as I am a fanboy of SpaceX and Elon, I still say hats off to you cuz you're doing a good job. Please like and subscribe to this channel. I would be ever so grateful if you did. My name's Hill Phantom, and until next time, reminding you to always send it.